My, 25M, girlfriend, 23F, wants to move in with me without paying rent. What should I do? We've been together for four years, but she was in school, living in her own apartment with support from her parents. Now that she's finishing school, she wants to move in with me. I own my home with total monthly costs, mortgage, utilities, WA, of $3,000. I earn about $160,000 annually, while she expects to make around $75,000. She wants to move in and cover only the increased utilities and her food costs. I estimate utilities to increase by less than $100. Comparable rent in the area for a similar space is around $2,500 but you can easily find a decent place for $1,100. She also has the option to live with her parents for free and they live about 10 minutes away from me, but she doesn't want to do that. I believe she should contribute towards rent. Considering our income disparity, I'd suggest $500 plus utilities, which is proportionate to our earnings, significantly in her favor. However, she disagrees, feeling it's unreasonable. She believes I should be glad to live together regardless of costs and expects me to provide. She doesn't plan to cook or clean, just cover the utilities increase in her food. Also, she plans on doing her master's in two years and expects that I cover all living costs for both of us because she will be in school and too busy to work. I don't mind supporting her if she is in school and willing to help out around the house, but right now she is going to have an income and still wants to live for free. Edit. She keeps bringing up the point that she has student loans and thinks because she needs to pay those back she should live for free, also that she wants to max out her 401k and Roth IRA. Edit 2. Me. We are sharing a space so we should both contribute. Her. You would prefer me in debt rather than try and help. Your mortgage stays the same so you aren't financially affected. I think your offer of 500 plus utilities is above generous, and you need to stand your ground on that number. If you get around to marrying this woman, prenup. She believes I should be glad to live together regardless of costs. Then why isn't she glad to live together regardless of costs? If this was me, she'd be my ex-girlfriend. You're 25 earning 160k with your own home. That's amazing. If what you think is fair isn't acceptable to her, she can simply not move in. Do not let her move in unless she agrees to at least the $500 per mo. She is your GF, not your wife. It is ridiculous she expects you to provide for her when she may be making $75,000. Do you understand she wants you to provide for her? Hey, she doesn't mention anything about loving you, wanting to build a life with you, etc. She wants you to be her sugar daddy. Stand your ground. Your proposal is extremely generous, and if she is not going to provide upkeep to the house on other ways, it is absolutely ridiculous that she expects to live for free. Most men provide for women living with them who contribute to the home in the way she says she isn't willing to do. So what's her angle? If she doesn't like it, she doesn't have to move in. You hold the cards here and she'd be an idiot to reject your offer. Me M35, partner 38F. I always said I'd leave if cheated on, so why haven't I? So I found out my partner of 12 years has recently had an affair for 3 months. I'm not going into the specifics as it's irrelevant to my question. I always said that would be a deal breaker and no matter what, I would leave. I can't say I ever thought it would happen to be honest, but here I am, it's happened and I haven't left, yet. Parts of me want to stay, I love her, she's my everything, I'd like to try work it out and she says the same, but the other part of me thinks I'd be stupid to trust her again as it will only lead to more heartbreak in the future. Those who have been through this and stayed, do you regret it or have you found your relationship to be stronger after? Also those who left, do you regret not giving it a second try? I ask that those who haven't been through this, please don't answer with your hypothetical answers, before finding out I'd have given advice to leave but now my opinion isn't so black and white. Tia. Yes, I regretted believing him and giving him second, third and hundred chances. It was a waste of time because it just kept happening. And it turned me into someone I didn't recognize. Clingy, paranoid, literally insane. I followed him to his mistress' house the last night when he had an elaborate story about having to work late. It was the last straw when I saw his truck in her driveway. I knew he would never change and the only way out was if I ended the relationship for good. Hardest thing I've ever done, but also the best decision of my life. Therapist here people change and you have a long history together.
It's understandable that you thought you'd react one way and you are confused why you haven't ended it. Relationships are complicated and some relationships can survive infidelity. There are factors to examine that led to infidelity, miscommunication, needs not being met, feeling grass is greener somewhere else, etc. Reddit jumps to break up really quickly. Real life is more nuanced. Consider individual or couples therapy to navigate this. Was she honest? Is she remorseful? Did she confess or did you catch her? How you find out and how they react makes a difference. I stayed following her emotional affair. It's been a difficult road but things are excellent now. But if it had been physical, I don't think I could have stayed. Because you struggle with low self-esteem. She doesn't respect you or she would not cheat. If you take her back she will respect you even less and she will cheat again. Respect yourself. I left the immediately. Soon as she walked in the door, I would been already packed and ready to go told her I knew exactly what she was doing and I left. I don't regret what I did. After that, my life was so much better and I've had a very good life since that point in time. I, 28M, want to call my family, 70F, 55F, 59M, and tell them I'm dead. Should I? I moved out of home about a year ago following years of emotional, physical and financial abuse at the hands of my family. It's frowned upon in my country for people to move out of their family homes. Growing up, my grandmother, 70F, ran the house with an iron fist. She controlled all finances and therefore the movement of everybody at home. My father, 59M, was physically and emotionally abusive towards me and my mother. He calmed down after the birth of my brother and distanced himself from the family. We barely see him now or know about him. My grandmother cut off my funds. She has a humongous role to play in my and my mother's abuse. She demanded I take the responsibility of the family at 17. Other relatives supported her demand and kept pushing me to take up jobs when I had barely finished school. When I couldn't on account of being a literal teenager, she grew hostile and started pushing me to pay money to live in my home. I started earning by 19, but they'd never let me pursue a degree, figure out my finances, or move out of the home. They'd refuse me food, lock me out of the house, place unrealistic financial demands onto me so I couldn't save anything. Anything to make sure I'm stuck in their control loop. I left that home a year ago. I couldn't take it anymore and I'd finally figured a way out. I received a couple mails on that address my grandmother and brother refused that anybody with my name lived in that house. I've grown up caring for my mother, 55F, and standing up to others for her abuse. I've tried my best to care for her through her dark periods even when I was barely a kid. I called her day before yesterday. I missed seeing her, I was afraid for her health. She barely spoke to me, didn't ask me anything, said if I ever come to their home, the gates will not be opened. She hung up before I could say anything. It hurt me so so much. Now I'm spiraling and absolutely dysregulated and all I want to do is have somebody call them and tell them I'm dead. They cannot see me anymore even if they want to. I'm so angry that this is all that makes sense. What do I even do? You know what will annoy them the most. If you are independent and happy without them. You've gotten away from that horrible family, so go on and live your life and be happy. Listen. This is gonna be hard to hear. Your mom isn't innocent. Nobody in that family is. You got two options. Walk away, or go nuclear. If you go nuclear, just air out all the family dirt. Op. Be sure I understand where you are. Now, the, I am dead, is childish. It is worthy of a romantic drama. In real world, it will only bring complications. What I suggest is more efficient and somehow worst for them. Go full NC and go live on another city. Take a job to pay your education, get a degree, get a better job, get a partner, get a new family. Living happy is the best of revenge. In some years, some of them will try to reconnect and you will be the one with the power. And since they didn't help, in fact tried to prevent, with your education and sentimental life, you have the right to not let them access your money and your children. Since money is their level of control, make them pay literally. You don't need to be the adult here. You are already the adult. If you call them they probably won't believe you're dead. Sweetie, you need therapy. You're still letting your family control you and you need to get past that. 
The best revenge is to live well. So live well. A state heir issues with me, 29 female, and aunt, 28 female. Do I keep the money? My grandpa passed last summer and listed myself, 29 female, and my brother, 30 male, in his will as heirs to his estate, along with his daughter, my aunt, 28 female. His only other child, my mother, passed away five years ago. My aunt is a year younger than me and has been my best friend and more like a sister for my entire life. So when she said he had verbally said he wanted everything to go to her, I believed her and agreed to sign over my part, as did my brother. We have not done so yet. She was going to let me move into his house and rent for cheap, as my dad wants me to move out. However, this is causing tension because I cannot afford to pay much. I'm supposed to move in a few days. When my dad found out she was upset about money, he exploded and yelled about how she's always been selfish and that estate money was mine and my brother's too. My friend says the same, that it was my mom's portion and should go to us. However, I'm afraid to say something and ruin our relationship. It would also stop me from moving in. If I wanted to keep that money, I'm also not sure if she'd have legal recourse because I verbally agreed to sign it over. And her lawyer knows this. This is in MN. What should I do? No, no, no. Absolutely do not sign everything over to her. At the very least, the half that is your late mother's inheritance should go to you and your brother. Let the will play out. This is why you should always go with the will as written. Has been my best friend and more like a sister for my entire life. She may be your best friend and sister to you, but she does not consider you her best friend or sister. She is actively trying to screw you over for money. That's not what best friends do. She is not your friend. Your grandpa has been crystal clear in his intentions. That's what the will is for. Do not give away the money your grandfather wanted you to have. Let me state this as bluntly as possible. You would be foolish to disclaim your share of the estate. Period. Your grandfather left a will. If he wanted your aunt to inherit his entire estate, he'd have prepared a new will. He didn't. To sign everything over to your aunt would be an insult to his memory. Moreover, your aunt doesn't seem to value a relationship with her as much as you do. Honor your grandfather's intent. I'm going through something similar myself right now. My mom passed and left her home in California to me outright. My brother who hadn't spoke to her in over a decade tried to guilt me into giving him half. When she was alive he wouldn't help with her care at all. I told him, politely, to pound sand. Your grandpa wanted the three of you to benefit from his estate. His wishes should be honored and fulfilled. Period. Tell your aunt that you've reflected on the matter and you can't go against your grandpa's final wishes. People get ugly when family dies especially when there's money involved. If it's yours in writing I'd say keep it. People lie, cheat, and steal when there is money on the table. 